western point of Indonesia um, to Sabang where we will exit the country and there's a bit of a gap there's a bit of a tricky part in about 15 nautica miles away so we're about to go through that little channel oh, what's it called crack I don't know we're going through the uh, all I have in my head is hole in the wall I can't think of any other word I don't know. Channel. We're going through a channel. Here we go. One hundred miles from the surface, I take the back streets on purpose. Like we mounted, everyone. Slack of the tide. You face it. Right on. Um, going off Navionics in the Gap in Australia was completely off, but uh, that's we're right on the top of the tide now, um, and it's it's only like a point four of a high, so it's only there's not a lot of movement in this run now. I probably couldn't have got a better day to get through here. It's still doing. Well, we're, doing, we're still doing up near four knots, so there's not much. We've probably only got a knot, of, a knot or two of current against us, so nothing. Yay! <laughs> you can tell it's the stuck of the tide because these boats are just drifting there. Oh, yay! Now we just need uh, no wind to Thailand or some wind from behind or on the beam would be nice. <laughs> About eight knots on the nose, ten knots of wind on the nose. As soon as we get out around here, hopefully we can sail because our fuel is running really low. We've done a lot of motoring over the last couple of days. Last um, week. We never know how much fuel we've got. <laughs> it's a bladder, so I sort of give it a bit of a feel. But um, I think we'll be right. We might even get a nice little sail in today. And uh, we're ready for our passage to Phuket. Woohoo! So excited, some different food. Thinking like a little bit of pad thai. Oh, different flavours. Different flavours. What's going on, Mama? <laughs> just having a moment. I just talked to my brother who's in America and I haven't seen him for nearly three years. <laughs> I miss him, and I miss our family. And I don't want to go back, I don't want to stop this life, even if it's only for a few weeks, and just have that time with them, and then come back. I'd love to fly home, and I'd love to, no, no, this time of year, I just get real emotional. <laughs> At the moment, we can't go back, so, I think that's the hardest. I got over my little wave of sadness and we arrived at where we would anchor for the night. Not very far from Sabang Harbour. last night or yesterday afternoon it's really pretty in here but um we just looked at the weather again and there's potentially a window right now to go across to thailand to phuket we aren't ready we've got to get fuel and provision and then check out so we're not sure if we can all do that in within we're gonna go over and try so we're leaving this beautiful place that we thought we could maybe hang for a couple of days but we're going to leave and go over to sabang closer to sabang and um See if we can do all the checking out and get a, well, at least get ready. So here we go. First, though, a morning swim.
So we just come into Sabang Harbour and we dropped anchor once and it didn't bite. So going again. Second time lucky. So we're in the harbour and we're going to see if we can just punch it out and get our fuel, get out of here. We filled the dinghy with our jerry cans and headed over to town to see where we could tie up the tender. We tied up the dinghy to the floating pontoon, crossed this little dodgy section and went into town. First stop was to find an ATM, then hunt someone down to take us to a fuel station with all our jerry cans. Then we had to go back to the tender, get all the jerry cans up to the transportation. Boys were done with the first trip. Now back to Catalpa to fill up the fuel bladders and then get the jerrys again and go back to town to fill them up the second time. We motored a lot on our way here so we've used a lot of fuel and wanted to make sure that we were full for our crossing. 50 cents a litre we had to pay one dollar but uh, I will show you in an episode to come um, I've had this filter now for a year in Indonesia so when we've got more time we're not so rushed to get out of this country I'm going to pull this out and show you what it looks like a year of pre-filtering. Um, highly recommend this. Uh, so we're looking for quarantine so we can uh, check out of Indonesia. Lots of paperwork and stamping. If you are sailing to Indonesia, it's a really good idea to get yourself a boat stamp. A boat stamp is simply a stamp that has your boat name, your port, your registration number and country. If it's my last day on earth, I want to spend it with you. So we're here in Sabang in Indonesia just before we depart to Phuket and as we notice in every location in Indonesia the boats are just slightly different and we haven't seen any of these boats like this they have like a big square back on them just unique to this area whereas when you're down at Lombok and whatnot they've got their own little shaped boat so just interesting all over Indonesia there'll be just a whole fleet of these unique boats to whether it's to do with the uh, weather conditions, how they fish, what they use them for, but just really cool boats. This was our sweet ride and it cost us about 20 Australian dollars for him to drive us around to the next three offices. Check out of Indonesia. I think it's going well. It's all going smoothly. Hope so. <laughs> paperwork and more paperwork, and of course, more stamping.
customs office. Here we go. Hey! <laughs> Have a master. checked out and we're just gonna get some food and then we're gonna we're gonna head off so yeah. into the night. Yeah. And away to the Thailand. Hopefully not run into any nautilus or yeah. headwinds. Come on. Light winds please. The whole checking out procedure took us about two hours and this varies on the day and where you check out of. Okay we're done. So we've got our provisions, little little provisioning session done. We've got some, some fruit and veggies and uh, we've got some dinner and it's getting dark and we're about to leave Indonesia. Two days if all goes well to Phuket. It isn't looking that great in two days. So. And if it gets really bad like predicted in three days we may even just end up getting blown back to Indonesia. <laughs> we could be back sooner than we think. That so was a quick stop in Sabang. We thought we might be here for a little bit waiting for a window but we pulled our finger out today and uh, got it sorted and we're, we're off. We're off! Off like a what? Off like a bride's nighty. <laughs> Next time we step on land, it'll be a new country. Oh. So we've just checked out. We've been to all the official offices here in Sabang. And like we arrived last night, we came over to Sabang Harbour this morning and we've checked out the country already. So we, there's a really small window of light winds for the next two days. And after that, there's kind of not really any um, another window for like a week so we are just gonna go and uh, hope for the best and hope that maybe that third day will be light winds as well so fingers crossed it's, it's southeasterly at the moment so we're super stoked it's 220 nautical miles to Phuket and it should only take a couple of days maybe two to three days but um, depending on weather it's kind of weird leaving Indonesia we've been here for a year and we kind of, it's kind of, we know we're comfortable here, so yeah, we'll miss the people, and we'll miss everything, but we're super excited for our new adventures and new food. Can't wait for Thai food. All right, we're off, we're pulling anchor. Later, Indonesia. Thanks for the good times. We love you. Mwah! And we'll be back. All right, so we just pulled anchor, everyone. We've, uh, we're leaving Indonesia. Just pulled anchor in the middle of a storm. That's how <laughs> excited we are to get out of here. It's raining, it's wet, it's windy. I think the wind's behind us, so 
It's a good thing. Fingers crossed. That's why we've gone now. That's why we've kind of rushed it because we've got a bit of a wind window. But. All right. We're in a harbour. We're just going to have to get that light out of our face right now. All right. Bye, Indonesia. So poor Lily's rugging up. He's already his first rain jacket's wet through. We'll try another one. Gotta get some proper wet weather gear. We are not set up for wet weather. Not. Open cockpit, bloody not covered in helm. The old uh, Marlin from BCF just doesn't cut it. Holds more water in and out. Might be water resistant, but it's definitely not waterproof. No, no, my work jackets, which I don't know, they just still leak to all our wet weather gear leaks. So I'd love to. Uh... See that bagels. These videos are made possible because of our patrons. Thank you all so very much. It all comes all thanks to you all. Up next. He's changed course, sped up, done a lot, but this guy seems to be uh, tailing us and leaves us still a little bit worried. We're in the middle of the ocean, nowhere around, uh, about 80 nautical miles off Indonesia. So guys, that was episode 135. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and please share this video with all your other friends. Yeah, thumbs up guys, especially at the moment with no one being able to comment. Um, it sucks a bit, but hoping YouTube will sort something out. Yeah, if you want to comment in the meantime, I will create a post. Just look for the same little thumbnail and episode 135 and you should be able to comment on there. I do, we all miss reading your comments, so please feel free to find that. Otherwise, head over to Instagram or Facebook at Sailing Catalpa. Happy Easter, guys. It's yeah, Sunday happy today. Easter. Um, as you can see, we aren't on the boat. We're actually back in Australia visiting our friends and family and we're having a really nice time. We'll be back in the boat uh, in a couple of weeks, but in the meantime... All right, guys, so we've got some news where um, Lee's going to fill you in. We've had enough boating and we're selling Catalpa. We are going to sell Catalpa. The other part was a lie. So we are, as you can see, not on the boat at the moment. We are back in Australia visiting our family and friends only for the next couple of weeks. Um, we thought while we were here, we would see if there was any interest in Catalpa and selling and if anybody wanted to buy her. So she's looking really good at the moment. We've got her ready. So we're either going to take this to the Philippines or we're going to sell her and we're going to upsize slightly, just a little bit bigger, which we feel will be suitable for us. Yeah, so if you are interested, you know somebody interested, you want to start living your dream as soon as possible, send us an email, send us an offer. Um, we can talk to you all about everything and um, don't be worried. We are not stopping here. If we don't sell Catalpa, we will continue on her. And if we do sell Catalpa, we have bigger and better plans to circumnavigate the world and some, go to some very interesting locations. So we are super excited. Whatever happens doesn't matter. Um, we just wanted to put it out there to the universe, to you guys, and to see if anybody wanted to start living their dream. Um, that's about it. That's it. We're gonna go off and eat some Easter eggs because it's Easter. Happy Easter. We love you guys. We wanna say a massive thank you for watching and supporting our videos. Um, you may be able to comment on this. You may not be able to. If you can't, please send an email or head over to Instagram or Facebook at Sailing Catalpa and you can talk to us there. We will answer you and your questions. That's it. That's it. Biggest love, everybody. See you guys. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.